Well, welcome back folks, Jay Lamb Bio here for another exclusive video. Today we are going to be focusing on two primary things. These are things that we've already discussed in Chem 1, so it should be a quick, easy review for you guys. We're going to look at atomic mass units, better known as AMU, and we're also going to look at making some molar conversions today. Hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to understand the concept of atomic mass units and how it applies to the mass of an atom. And furthermore, you should be able to convert between moles, grams, and atoms using Avogadro's number and molar masses. Now, we don't have a whole lot of vocab terms today because this is mostly a math-based lesson, but you do need to understand the concepts of atomic mass units, molar mass, and Avogadro's number. So when we look at measuring the size of an atom, when we look at measuring the mass of an atom, we use the term atomic mass unit, or AMU. And this is roughly the mass of a single proton or neutron. Now, truth be told, a neutron is slightly larger in mass than a proton, but we use the same unit regardless. This is technically defined as 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom, which makes sense that it's roughly the mass of a proton or neutron, because carbon-12 has 12 protons and neutrons. That is its mass number. If it's 1 12th of that, then an atomic mass unit would be the mass of one proton or neutron. Now this is an equivalent value to molar mass. Remember that molar mass is the number of grams per mole, and that number is found on the periodic table. So for example, carbon-12 atom has a mass of 12 AMU, but if we had a mole of carbon-12, it would have a mass of 12 grams. So understand that the numbers are equivalent values even though the units are not. Yeah. Let's move on. One thing I also want you to notice is that the mass of an isotope, for example, carbon-12 has 12 AMU, is not the same as the molar mass on the periodic table. Carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 AMU, or grams per mole. Each element has a variety of naturally occurring isotopes that occur in different abundances. For example, carbon exists as carbon-12, mostly, a little bit of carbon-13, and some trace amounts of carbon-14. The mass that's on the periodic table is a weighted average of all of those isotopes in the abundance. If you look at the calculation here on the right, we just simply take the abundance percentage, we multiply it by the mass of each individual isotope, and then we add all of them together, and we get the average atomic mass, which is what's found on the periodic table. A couple key things with this. Remember that your average atomic mass has to be in between the mass of the lightest and heaviest isotope. It's also going to be closest To the isotope with the largest abundance. If you take a look, the average atomic mass of magnesium is 24.31, and that makes sense because the abundance of isotope, the abundance of the isotope with magnesium 24 is 79%. So the average is going to be closest to that value. Let's do a practice problem. Boron has two naturally occurring isotopes, B10 and B11. B10 occurs 19.8% of the time, and B11 occurs 80.2%. Determine the average atomic mass. Well, remember, all we need to do is we just need to take the mass. Okay, so we have 10 and 11. And again, sometimes you'll see these in a little more detail. Um, 10 occurs 19.8% of the time, and 11 occurs 80.2% of the time. So we're just going to take the mass and multiply it by the abundance. Remember that these need to be in decimal form. And to finish, we just add them up. Simple enough. Now, you may have some instances where you have three, four, or five naturally occurring isotopes. The process is still the same. Take the mass and multiply by the abundance. Now, sometimes this will give you a mass that's a little more detailed than just 10, you may have to see some decimal places, you would just use that number as well. Now keep in mind that the average atomic mass, also known as the molar mass, is very useful in determining how many grams are in a mole of something. If you remember back from general chemistry, a mole refers to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules, this is also known as Avogadro's number, of an element or compound. 
Now keep in mind that the atomic mass increases as you go up the periodic table, not because we have more atoms. Remember, the number of atoms in a mole is a constant value. So when we look at the molar masses, they're how many grams are in a mole of something. We'll notice that that increases as you go up the periodic table. Well, that makes sense because the size of the atom increases. You know this based on the mass numbers that we've been going through. The mass number of lithium might be six or seven, whereas the mass number of silver might be 100, 101, 102. So the size of the atoms get larger, which result in larger atomic masses. Now, because molar mass and Avogadro's number are derived units, that is how many grams are in a mole and how many atoms are in a mole, we can use them as conversion factors. And what I put here for you is the lovely mole wheel. This mole wheel helps you understand what numbers you need to use in order to convert between one thing and another. So for example, if I want to go from grams to moles, I'm going to use the molar mass. That's what the thing is on the arrow. If I want to go from atoms to moles, I'm going to use Avogadro's number. The key thing here to notice is that there is no direct conversion between atoms, molecules, particles, and grams. You have to convert to moles first, and then utilize the molar mass to convert to grams. Vice versa, with grams going to atoms, molecules, or particles, you're going to have to use two conversions rather than just one. Let's do a practice problem. Determine the number of moles in 24.5 grams of oxygen, then determine the number of atoms. Well, this is a pretty straightforward problem as well. We're given 24.5 grams of oxygen, and the question is asking for moles. Well, is there a direct conversion between grams and moles? Then the answer is yes. We look at our mole wheel, we're going to use our molar mass. So let's start off with what we know. This is a dimensional analysis problem, so 20. We're going to start off with what we know. This is a dimensional analysis problem, so we're going to start with 24.5 grams of oxygen grams of oxygen on the bottom of the next step, and moles on top. Grams and mole, we always find that on the periodic table, always, 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 so I get out my handy dandy periodic table, and I notice that there are 16.00 grams in a mole of oxygen. Now I just simply do my math and solve. Using correct significant figures, I have 1.5 three moles of oxygen. Easy. The next set part asks you to convert to atoms. Well, we already have moles. The conversion between moles and atoms is Avogadro's number. So we're going to start with 1.53 moles of oxygen. And we're going to convert to atoms. Remember, using Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's 23, I promise. <laughs> we can then figure this out. Be sure you punch this in your calculator correctly. And if you need help, I can show that to you. So my answer here is going to be 9.22 times 10 to the 23rd. atoms of oxygen. All right. So as I mentioned before, all this really boils down to is just making sure that you know how to do significant figures. Make sure you understand how to do your conversions, going from grams to moles, moles to atoms, stuff we've already talked about before. One last bit before we wrap up the video is that I may ask you to do, conver well, may, I know I'm going to ask you to do conversions of compounds, not necessarily just atoms. So to get the molar mass of the compound, we simply just add the molar masses of each part of the molecule. So if I want to know the molar mass of CH4, which is also known as methane, I would take the mass of one carbon plus four hydrogens. And as a result, I get the molar mass of methane, 16.05 grams per mole. Let's do some practice with this. First problem asks us to determine the molar mass of CaCO3. Now this one's pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is we're going to take the mass of one calcium, one carbon, and three oxygens and add them together. So we're going to take 40.08 plus 12.01 plus 3 times 16. We get our answer of 100.09 
grams per mole. Make sure you're including your units in everything that you do. Next, determine the molar mass of uh, iron 2 hydroxide. So we'll take the mass of one iron. Now here, this is distributive property. Think distributive property math. I'm going to use the 2, and I'm going to move that over. So we're going to have two oxygens and two hydrogens. You always do that if you see it in parentheses. If it's not in parentheses, it's only to the atom. So for example, CaCO3, I didn't put 3 next to carbon. I put 3 with oxygen. If they're in brackets, you distribute that 2 to everything inside of the parentheses. So we're going to do this calculation. get 89.97 grams per mole. Pretty simple stuff. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you understand the learning objectives here to uh, be able to convert between grams, moles, and atoms and understand atomic mass units. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below. Just kidding, you can't. <laughs> I block them. <laughs> I'm an evil human being. But hey, if you need anything, make sure you guys let me know. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.